What's going on guys, Tyler here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make this Linktree style page using nothing but Elementor. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing and joining the family to see future videos just like this one. Also, if you guys are interested, Elementor Pro is linked down below in the description. Elementor Pro is a fantastic plugin that helps you get the most out of Elementor and helps making designing websites very easy. Now we're gonna move kind of fast through this process, but just stick with me and follow the steps that I am doing. If you have any questions, you can drop them down below and myself or someone from the community should be able to get back to you and help you answer your questions. All right, so welcome to the back end of this page. Now I wanna show you here, this is typically how you're going to view the page. You're gonna view it through a mobile device. Sometimes people look at them on desktop, but that's not as common. It's definitely more common to look at these type of pages on mobile devices. So that's how we're gonna design it. We're gonna design it for a mobile device here. Now, one thing that I do want to mention is if you go down here and click on responsive mode, you can actually click on mobile right here, and this will change Elementor's view to be a mobile view, and it's going to make it designing for mobile a lot easier. And one last thing before we jump in, I'm going to go ahead and put out another video here on my channel about some cool effects that you can actually do with these different links and everything like that. There's a lot of different things you can do on this page, but this is a little bit too in-depth for this video, so I'm going to put that video out at a later date. If you want to be following, make sure you hit subscribe and tick that bell so you're notified when that video comes out. All right, now as we jump in, let's go ahead and take a look at the breakdown of this page. Now I chose to go with the kind of link tree style layout with a profile picture, a title, and that title could even be like your username or your handle across multiple social medias, um, and then a description. So the description is going to be maybe like a little bit about what you do for your profession or something like that. Depending on what these links are for, you can go ahead and put these things in. It's very easy. I'm not going to go through how to do this. You just add an image, a title, and a text editor and go ahead and fill in the information. Now, continuing on with the breakdown, you can see that each one of my links is broken down into a section. Now, this section, you can see that little uh, blue border around the different elements here. That section comprise, is comprised of an HTML element, an intersection with two columns inside of it, and another HTML element. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how we create this section. And then just so you know, future reference, duplicating this section, I'll show you at the end of this video, is very easy and you can make multiple links very, very easy after you've got this created. Okay, so let's start. Let's go ahead and go to the very bottom and we're gonna create a link for an app store. Okay, we have, let's say we have an app and we wanna create a link for an app store. We're gonna go ahead and click add new section. We want the section to be just one column width and we're gonna drag this section all the way to the top. If you want to go ahead and click Navigator down here, you can have this pop up and it actually makes it easier to drag things all the way up. So I can drag this. Uh, let's drag it up there and see where that went. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. That's right where we needed it. So right here we have a new section all ready to go. Now the first thing I like to do is get our layout structure set up. So let's go ahead and grab an HTML uh, element here and drag it in because we need an HTML element at the top and then we'll go back and grab one more here Let's drag that one in. Okay, again, it's in the same section there, um, but we've got two HTML elements in there now. So that's gonna be the begin, the beginning and the end. Let's go ahead and add an inner section. That's I-N-N-E-R section, inner section. We're gonna go ahead and drop that in. And right there, we now have the basic layout of how our link is going to look. Now you can notice a few things here. We've got some weird spacing going on. Our box is a little bit off the page and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is go ahead and click on our section, our main section here. And you can see over here on the navigator what I've clicked on. Um, let's go ahead and make it a width of 360. That's going to make it a width of 360 pixels. It's up to you what you want to size that as. But just remember for mobile views, you're not going to want it much bigger than like 360 ish. That's usually generally a pretty good size. If you need it a little wider, maybe if you need a little smaller, that's fine. But whatever you like, I like 360. Let's go ahead and uh, set change some things here. We're going to go ahead and go to the column, hit 
edit column, we need the widgets space. That's that extra space that we're getting in between stuff. Let's go ahead and set that to zero. You can see that got rid of that gap and now all of our widgets are stacked on top of each other. Now, we're not gonna worry about the HTML element yet, either of them. Let's go ahead and start designing our intersection. Now, if you look at this intersection, it looks like a button. It looks like a button, that PayPal button right down there. It looks like a whole button you could click on. You could click over here and it would look like you would click on the button. It could You could click over here and it would look like you're clicking on the button. So we want the whole thing to feel like a button, but really it's comprised of different like backgrounds um, and different just elements. It's not a button in itself, but we're going to make it look like a button. So we need to first line up these columns on the same row. You can see they're stacked on top of each other. Let's go ahead and click on the first column here in the intersection. Again, we're in the intersection on that column. Now, as long as these columns have a width equal to 100% between the two of them, they will be on the same row. Meaning we could do 30% on the left column and 70% on the right column. We could do 20% on the left column, 80% on the right column. It has to equal up to 100. When it equals up to 100, they will be on the same row. Now, for example, I'm going to do 25% on the left column and for the right, because it has to equal 100, I will do 75%. You can see once they equal 100%, they're on the same row. The column width is taking up a total of 100% of that line. All right, so now that we've got that set up, we can go ahead and start designing here. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and let's go ahead and drag in an icon here. Because like I said, it's not really a button. We're just creating something that looks like a button. So let's go ahead. We're doing it for an app store. We can go ahead and click right over here and select our icon. I'm going to look up app store. Perfect. This one right here looks great. We'll go ahead and insert that. I'm going to go over to style here and change the color. I want the app store logo to be white. That looks better to me. It looks like white right there looks really good. It'll pop off the button a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and size this as well. Now you might want to adjust your sizing um, and you can always come back and do this. I know specifically from this website, 38 looks pretty good. That's a good size for me. Um, if you don't know yet, it's okay. Just kind of put it maybe around 38 and then kind of go from there and see how it looks in the end. Um, now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and click edit column. So we're on the column now and we want to go ahead and hit uh, vertical align middle. Now, that might have not changed anything right now, but I'll show you actually what it did change when uh, when we get to that step. Um, and then the next thing is we're gonna go ahead and hit, we're uh, still under this column, the left-hand column, hit style. We're gonna go to background type. Now we need to go ahead and Google the hex color code of whatever it is we're using. You can see this is the PayPal blue color code. This is the Twitch purple color code, um, the Discord kind of like bluish color code. Um, what I did is I just simply Google the hex color code and then grab the one that looks like the brand. It really helps it, the, the person that you, is using your website to really recognize like, oh, this is their Amazon page or, oh, this is their Instagram page or this is their YouTube. Like it really just helps them recognize it with that color code. You can use whatever color you want, but I prefer the brand color. So give me one second. I'm going to Google this and I'll be right back. Okay. So I got the color hex code. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and again, editing this left column here, we're going to go to style and background. We're going to go ahead and click classic. And then over here on color, we're going to go ahead and click that. And you can go ahead and paste in your six digit color hex code right there. Perfect, that is right there. That's, you can see the button is starting to form here. Now what we need to do is go down to border. We wanna add a border type of solid. Now we're gonna add a border right here. We want this border to be five width all the way around, five top, right, bottom, and left. We want five width all the way around. And if you leave this linked, it will actually keep all of those digits the same. So you can see I added five to the top and it added five everywhere. Now for border radius, we don't want to round the corners on all sides because as you can see down here, only the top left and the bottom left are rounded. You can see the the other on the other column, the top right and the bottom right are rounded. But here in the middle, we don't want it rounded. It would just look really weird. So we want them flat and flush so they're touching each other, making the illusion that it's all one button. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and uncheck this linked values, go with the top. We're gonna go ahead and add a 15 pixel rounded border. And then with the left, we're gonna go ahead and add a 15 pixel 
pixel rounded border. Now you can kind of see it rounded the edges right there and we are good to go right there with that. Now we got want to go ahead, oh, we didn't add a color here to our border. Make sure you do this, I, I almost missed it here. Um, go ahead and click there and then go ahead and add your same hex code that you have before. There we go, now it filled it in. It's got that full border there. You can see it goes to the edges of the widget there and uh, we are good to go there. Now one thing that I do want to mention also is that we do want to make sure everything is lined up here. I can see that the the icon is has a little bit of space. I don't know if you can see that very well on the video, but it has a little bit of space around its border. So it, around its box that's holding the icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit here. I'm gonna go over to advanced. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the link values. We'll go to bottom. I wanna make a negative seven um, pixel bottom margin shift. Now, I don't know if you saw that. It's really kind of hard to see, but you can see that the button is now a little bit skinnier and it is the the icon is actually fitting in the box a lot better. That looks really good. That is pretty much it. We're pretty much done with the left column. Let's go ahead and work on the right column here. Hopefully you guys are staying with me again. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And if you like this video, please help me out and hit that like button. It would really help me out. Now over here on the right side, we're just simply gonna drag in two things here. We want two elements to drag in. We want a heading. And then these are optional. Again, guys, if you don't want these, you don't have to add them, but I prefer them. I kind of want to give them a title of what this is and then go ahead and give them a little bit of a description of what they're clicking on. So right here in the, the heading, I'm going to go ahead and type in um, App Store. And you can see the color of it is, is very dark. We want to go ahead and edit this, go to style, go ahead and change the text color. I'm going to change mine to white because I have a black background on my website, but it's up to you, whatever color you want to use. And then for this, I'm going to do the same thing, style, text color, and again, drag it to white. Uh, let's, let's put a, as a description, get our free app today, exclamation point. Perfect. Now we wanna go ahead and resize this text a little bit. Now I have gone through, obviously I've, I've figured out what works really well for my website, but this is up to you guys, whatever you prefer. Under typography here, you can go ahead and set a size. You can just drag it if you prefer um, to, to adjust it there. I'm gonna use 23. I know that works well for my title. And I'm also gonna use the art, I think it's Archivo, I think that's how you say it, Archivo text for my title. I think that looks really good. It's the same font as my other ones and that's the same size. Now for the description, we're gonna go ahead and edit this. We're gonna go ahead and uh, let's see, we want to adjust the size under typography. Let's go ahead and set it to a size of 12. Okay, now you can see there's some major spacing issues going on here. What we need to do is actually click on the column here, go ahead and set that widgets space back to zero. We don't want any kind of weird spacing going on there. All right, cool, and things are coming together. You can see it's starting to look a little bit better here. Now, if you'd wanted to just leave it there, how you just have that kind of colored tab on the left, you could definitely do that, but I kind of want this border around it to make it look like it's all one button. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit the column again here, go to style, we want to add a border here. We want to add a solid border. We want that border to be the same width that we set on the left side. So that's a five pixel border to all sides here. We need to add the color. We'll go ahead and paste in our color hex code there. And then we need to add some border radius. Again, only to the right side, to the top right and the bottom right here. We're going to go ahead and unlink these values and go to the bottom. We want a 15 pixel border. And to the right, we want a 15 pixel border as well. You can see that rounded those corners. All right, guys, so we are very close. We are very close to completing this button here. What we want to do is go ahead and click on the description, edit the description. You can see there's some kind of spacing issues down here. It's got some extra space. I'm gonna go ahead. I know this off, obviously offhand because I've designed these before, but I'm gonna go ahead and unlink these values. I'm gonna go ahead and put a negative 15 border or negative 15 margin at the bottom. And you can see as I add that, everything seems to line up. And look at that, guys. Look at our App Store button. It looks so good. It's designed really nicely. It's in that color that we're looking for. It's looking just fantastic. Now, what we're gonna do up here with these HTML tags is we need to go ahead and edit them. So let's go ahead and edit the first one. Now, this is just a little bit of HTML code. This is the basic of the basics. So bear with me, it's very easy. We need a open bracket here, an open little little uh, greater than sign there. Let's go ahead and open it up there and put lowercase a space href 
equals and then quotation marks. Now Elementor will put your cursor right in between the quotation marks. That's where we need to paste in our link that we wanna link this to. So let's say this is for the App Store. I don't have a link right off hand, but I'm gonna just go ahead and put in HTTPS colon slash slash and then Tyler.id. That's the homepage for this website I'm designing. There's really nothing on that homepage, but we'll just put it right there. Now we need to go ahead and close the bracket. Now like a less than sign or a greater than sign, whichever one it is, um, go ahead and close that bracket. Now when you do that, I don't know if you noticed on the video, but this this new like close tag came up. It's a greater than sign, an open bracket, a slash, a lowercase a, and then another bracket. So we need to go ahead and delete that out. Now we need to remember that because we're gonna use that in just a moment, but we need to delete that out. So it ends basically, it says, a href equals um, per, uh, quotations, our website, close quotation, bracket and it ends there. Then at our second HTML tag, we need to edit that and we need to add that other little bit of code that the Elementor put in. We need to add that here. So open bracket slash lowercase a and close bracket right there. That's going to close the link. Now what's that, what that is doing guys is saying anything in between these two HTML tags is going to be a link, which is perfect because this is not actually a physical button, It but it's going to allow any part of this, of what we've created in this intersection, anything they touch in there is going to be a link, which is exactly how we want this button to behave. Now, now guys, that we've got this ready, let's go ahead and update and uh, check it out. Let's see if this worked. Let me pull up my phone here so we can actually take a look here and see how that works. Um, let me go ahead and switch this so we are ready to go. And let's refresh the page. And... There it is, there's our button. It looks really nice. We could add a little bit more of a description if we wanted it to you know, extend out a little bit more. You can see my other buttons have a little bit longer of a description, but for the most part, it's looking really good. Let's go ahead and tap it. I'm gonna tap, if you look in the middle, I'm gonna tap right here, okay? Right here on my phone. I'm gonna tap at the bottom right-hand corner. That's where I tapped, and look, it goes to the page perfectly. If I tap the top left-hand corner, like a, maybe above the logo and to the left, Boom, goes perfectly. If I tap the middle, boom, goes perfectly. It works perfectly, guys. It just, it, it's absolutely perfect. Okay, next, let me show you just how easy it is to create a second link. It is very, very easy. You're gonna go ahead and right click on your section, hit duplicate. Now we have two of the exact same links here and exact same buttons. Let's go ahead and just say we're gonna create an Amazon page, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit here. Let's link this to, oh, I don't know. Let's put, uh, amazon.com as our link, perfect. And then we're gonna go ahead and start designing the button here. Now, let me show you just how quickly you can do this. Um, I would go ahead and Google the hex code again for the Amazon, um, but let's go ahead and just start editing and I'll show you. Just follow exactly along with what I do here. So first we wanna change the logo. Let's go ahead and change this to Amazon. Perfect, we can use that one right there. Let's go ahead and edit the column and change the style, the color here to an Amazon orange. Again, like I said, I would copy that code, but let's take this Amazon co color code or this uh, Amazon orange type code right here and we'll use this. We'll go down to border. We'll go ahead and click color. We'll go ahead and paste in our color there. Perfect, that side is done on the left side. Let's go ahead and edit the right side now. We'll go into the edit column again, style, border, change the color code to that same color code there. And then we'll just go ahead and simply edit this text. Uh, let's put Amazon and then we'll change this to check out our Amazon page today, exclamation point. And boom, we're done. That's it guys, we got our second link completely ready and designed and it is ready to go. We don't have to change anything else. We've already got the link set up through this first HTML tag and let's go ahead and update that and take a look at it and see if it works here. Uh, we'll go ahead and refresh and hit the Amazon and look, just like that, we have it. Guys, it's just that simple to make these really awesome link tree style pages. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please consider dropping a thumbs up. And thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Elementor Pro is a fantastic plugin. It's linked in the description. I highly recommend it. Please check out that link. See what kind of price you can get for Elementor Pro. It will up your website game a ton. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care.